Every year, Startup Grind hosts our SG Women Leaders Month, proudly recognizing the accomplishments of successful women leaders all over the world. These women are founders, venture capitalists, engineers, executives, educators, and more who represent our community all around the world. This month's SG Women Month is proudly presented by Google for Startups and Silicon Valley Bank. Right, and uh, with us today, we have uh, Songi Li, uh, who is actually from uh, Weave. He, she is currently uh, based in, uh, she's a Korean, by the way, but she's based in New Zealand. And today we are here with, uh, with her for a fireside chat on her entrepreneurial journey from a human, humanitarian worker to deep tech entrepreneur. And let me kick off and ask her well let, let me have a big welcome a warm welcome to Songi. hello Songi. how are you hi hi marco uh, and everyone else uh thank you for having me um, i'm very good uh how are you guys doing uh from croatia malaysia some from new zealand and hope you guys are well and healthy and happy today so let me let me have a quick introduction of who Songi is, all right? So Songi is an entrepreneur and collective builder. Using technology for impact, she is passionate about building a globally collaborative economy with purpose-driven entrepreneurs and emerging technologies. She co-founded a Silicon Valley startup that empowered the world's unbanked population by providing access to Bitcoin through a decentralized SMS network. So, are you able to share a little bit more besides what I just um, uh, mentioned? Yeah, so yeah, that's very genetic introduction of uh, who I am. And I am uh, actually more than a tech entrepreneur that I am a entrepreneur as well. I'm, I'm a big advocate of uh, a mindfulness into the entrepreneur and the startup scene, also ecosystem builder like Markham. And so that's how we know each other, been a very big supporter of each other from the startup ecosystem builder. And I'm in uh, right now in a very a fun journey of building a few collective around Asia and uh, building uh, a different initiative with, around it. And I would love to introduce a little bit more about uh, uh, what those journeys are. Uh, but mostly that I was working for uh, one of the biggest humanitarian organization in Korea and and I certainly become a deep tag entrepreneur and I want to share a little bit of uh, this journey what does that mean to be a deep tech entrepreneur and why I chose that path and then where I am right now oh wow nice so so how long have you been uh, doing this um, um, like maybe you can start how long have you been um, involved in community building uh, well I think the community has been uh, just a big part of my nature uh, since I was young I, I've been in uh, many different communities here and there and as we all are and uh, the startup community that I start to actually realize that um, from 2000, uh, maybe 12, when I start working, then my first work at the humanitarian organization was actually working with the startups. And I get to know like, oh, okay, there is an interesting uh, people working with the technology and creating an impact and how that work, you know? And then, uh, and, and then actually, I will share a little bit more about my journey, but when I was in, in Africa for work and then I, I saw this big problem, uh, they cannot send and receive money. So then uh, me and my partner back then, we uh, were so deep into a blockchain and, a, and a Bitcoin, which is deep tech. Uh, so then we come up with idea that um, allow people to uh, send and receive money on the SMS uh, without internet. So that was a quite a, a leap, a jump, and uh, frogging from a uh, humanitarian worker to the to, uh, technology uh, uh, like builder and then uh, like startup founder. And that brought me to Silicon Valley and I learned like, okay, start a community and this is how community works. And you know, there are just so many different type of community in, in, even in the startup, but like overall the startup community is like really helping each other and sharing information, a like gift first basically. And, and that has been big inspiration for me. And then uh, 
and I, I got to meet like Techstar community and Startup Weekend. And after I left my company that I still had this, um, uh, the startup community craving and I brought this Startup Weekend a Seoul chapter to Korea. I reintroduced them again and that's how uh, all this startup uh, ecosystem building has started. Oh, nice. That's, that's, that's really, really nice. So, um, well, I think maybe some people out there are not very familiar with what um, deep tech is and, and would, would it be uh, able for us to understand a little bit more what, uh, uh, what exactly is deep tech? Yeah, so deep tech is, uh, it's, a, it's a very new term, actually. It has been, it's not like some traditional word, but, but generally speaking, the deep tech is basically the backbone of all the technology that we are using and which requires a quite a deep understanding of what's happening, not just technology itself, like uh, R&D is required and also big capital is required to, to make that happen. And also like, it's, it's kind of, uh, it takes a long time to make the commercial application. Uh, so I think it will be easier for everyone to understand what deep tech is as giving an example, such as AI in like artificial intelligence or like robotic or like biotech or advanced material and like the blockchain, which is where I'm coming from. And all these things building the backbone of the, the commercial technology. And it's, it's often quite radical and then creating a new market uh, for the future. So right now, I think the deep tech, uh, the role of deep tech is quite important since a lot of economy uh, struggles and like because of coronavirus, a lot of like way of living has changed. And there is a, so many opportunity that we can create the new economy, new frame of it. And I believe the deep tech uh, can, uh, uh, really contribute to building this new framework of the new society. And because it's so important and we have to uh, really also be careful with how we use this technology, but that's like another chapter of conversation. Oh, wow. That's really like a lot of information for everyone to understand a little bit more about deep tech um, besides just the other regular tech-related um, um, information, right? So what triggers you to shift from humanitarian works uh, to the deep tech industry? Yeah, so like, you know, I, I work for humanitarian organizations. Uh, that, that's, that itself kind of explained what kind of person I am. Like, I'm really motivated uh, uh, by the change and then like solving a problem. Uh, and uh, I, I wanted to help people. That was my motivation to uh, work in that industry. And, and then like deep tag uh, in, in, in terms is like kind of, kind of similar with creating, a, a disrupting the existing uh, a, a problem or a society and then uh, creating a new solution that is radical and uh, the creating uh, a solution that is quite impacting uh, people's everyday life at the end. So that's kind of the relationship uh, that I'm carrying. But I can share a little bit uh, my, my personal story, how I actually started. And uh, to do that, I will have to share my screen if it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let me have a look. Can you see my screen here? It is still loading. Okay. I gotta move. Oh, oh there we go. Can you see now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like a, a quite a tragic scene that um, you can see in the, in the field, we call it. Uh, and I was a marketer actually uh, in this humanitarian organization. Then I will go to um, uh, either Africa or South America or Asia with a film crew to capture the, some of the story for fundraising. Um, and I was in West Africa, Mali, 
And then this is uh, actually the picture of refugee camp. And I visit exactly one of, uh, one of those. And a uh, woman, uh, uh, householder, and uh, many children, like you see in the picture. And they don't have any way to send and receive money, as I explained earlier. So what they do uh, is actually her husband was in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, which is neighbor country, and they would have to put money into the plastic bag and then hand over, like hand to hand. This is like a crazy uh, way to deliver money. And still a lot of people who doesn't have any solution to uh, global immigrants that they're using this, this method uh, still now today, but hopefully that will get better. But anyway, so uh, me and uh, my friend uh, built the application that allow people to send uh, money, which is Bitcoin, uh, without internet. So they all have a 2G phone uh, with a solar panel charger. So they will, uh, that, that was the only way that they can actually communicate with the uh, outer world and other people. And that was the only valuable thing that they carry. And so we built that um, uh, application. And so like phone like this, they, they carry this 2G phone. And then we built the uh, uh, company called 37 Coin. Now it's not exist anymore, unfortunately. But like without borders and barriers, it's easy as sending a message. Like you can send the money. So it was quite a radical, uh, exciting project that we built. And uh, this was used in like a 19 plus countries around the world. And people start sending money and receive. Um, yeah, but like again, the whole point uh, of me going to deep tech, it wasn't like, okay, I, I'm going to go and I build a, uh, or contribute into the deep technology. It was more like, okay, this is a huge problem and deeply rooted in our society and our global situation. How can we solve this problem? And then the solution was deep tech. And then solution was a blockchain. Solution was a Bitcoin. And that's why we made our move to there. But it wasn't never like a solution focus first, but was always a problem first. And this is my big vision. Like, you know, still a lot of people are actually taking of uh we we are probably you and malcolm and us and whoever who is in this call is probably people who are on the top of the pyramid and which is holding up a major part of a capital and the power in the world and people who i just share in the picture they are the bottom of pyramid people and we are actually taking a lot of resources a lot of things from them and not giving back enough and you know there is so many stories behind it but i think we just don't have enough time but again like this deep technology particularly blockchain is uh what i am drawn to was that philosophy of it like basically the decentralized technology and decentralizing mean is not only just the system the decentralization but also the power distributing and then like the control distributing so i found the blockchain is basically the empowerment tool so we bring uh, powers and control back to uh, people's hands which it should be uh, as, a, as a common sense and normal so that's why i was more drawn to this uh, blockchain technology uh, particularly in the deep tech so yeah, and deep tech can also uh, impact our life. Uh, these are basically, you guys are familiar with, uh, some of you guys are familiar with this 17 uh, uh, chapter, which is SDG goals, you know, like, and I put like SDG here, logo here, but basically what blockchain and deep technology uh, that we are facing right now, what they try to do is actually achieve these 17 goals, so making the world better. And uh, there can be a lot of different argument. Maybe we can go over that in a Q&A session or another session. But the blockchain technology that I believe is basically bringing this impact to the world. And that's why uh, that kind of um, uh, bring me from humanitarian worker to the deep tech. And then also when I work in an NGO, uh, I always felt like 
I don't have enough power to change and I'm often powerless when I see these people. But then when I found a solution with technology, I was like, oh, maybe there is a little thing, but still something that I can do about it. So that made me really, really excited. And like, okay, even if there is like, not a hundred percent chance, but even if like there is a 10% or 1% of a chance for me to contribute to this kind of solution. And then maybe I really want to do that. So that's why I jumped. Yeah. That's kind of, uh, my background story here. Thank you for sharing. It's very inspiring actually. Um, the, especially the, the whole, um, the way of uh, how you want to help those, uh, or, not help but give back right i think that is really something that all of us can take note of and really look into like how can we actually give back in what we do or in our community whether it's a tech community or any community um during this period of time as well right yeah so, and like giving back is not just like whatever sharing what we have but it's more like how can we make them as empowered as we are how can we make yes. those individual as higher as we are? You know, that's the giving back that I'm talking about. Yeah. Agreed. Totally agreed. Um, so since you are already involved in the, uh, the deep tech um, um, and scene, right? So, um, and especially with the, uh, uh, can I say like, there's a kind of a hype, not say hybrid, but a kind of like a, a combination of, giving back and deep tech, right? To empower, to help communities, right? So would you able to also explain to, uh, uh, to every one of us or share with us about um, your current ventures uh, weave, um, 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 such as like Vake and also Impact Collective? I think this is very much related to what you have just shared to all of us. Yeah, so, I think my my role in this uh, startup community is basically connecting uh, blockchain or deep technology to the impact world. So uh, impact world is actually how can we you know really share the the, the power that we have and and also share what we have and like bringing impact to the world and then making more sustainable world and so how weave is basically uh started from the concept of how can we actually have a happy life but at the end of like everyone's <laughs> everyone's goal is like how can i have a life that is happy and healthy you know and how can you know i, I just jumped here from technology deep tech to the happiness but it has to be all related you know the, the reason why i'm having this call is actually to share uh, my entrepreneur journey and entrepreneurship is basically like solving a problem that is exists and it could be as little as your life but it could be as big as the global society and like the end goal of all entrepreneur and all business it has to be uh related to happiness and uh, my happiness is basically uh, coming from how I live my life how I design my life and weave is is collective uh, of people who working together and we are a group of people of professional uh, working with the people they love and trust and uh, do things that is matter for ourselves and to the world and third and still um, making enough resource to sustain our lifestyle so when we have a three tick for all yes tick to all these three questions i think it can be happy life and then you know the asian life we always work 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 there is no life but uh, my theory of change is the work and life shouldn't be so separated it should be together and work um, if we can change the working life and we can change the way of living too so that's how it started but the concept of it is actually coming from uh, um, a decentralization and uh, a blockchain philosophy and especially the concept we call DAO as a decentralized autonomous organization. And I take autonomy very seriously. So all individual in our group are autonomous human beings and we decentralize the power. So we don't have a boss, we don't have an office, everything is decentralized. We share the resource, we share our, our love and trust 
and the, the organization has become organism and we're working together. And that's how we've uh, worked and function. And it's quite interesting model uh, of working and I can talk forever, but I stop here. And then in the weave to uh, creating the resource that we need to sustain our life, the vague or impact collective, and then those are the projects that we are doing together as a WEAVE member. And the VAKE is basically, we're working with the World Vision Korea um, to create uh, the a social action uh, a network. So people uh, in, in World Vision, for example, like they, they are the biggest organization in Korea, biggest NGO in, our, in Korea. And they just had a, a challenge like, okay, we've been just fundraising 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 and do the work but right now what what's next you know like how can we actually bring more transparent uh, and then also more transformative experience for our people that we are interacting not just beneficiary but also donor is a big part of our our change uh, chain and the circle but the donors are always uh, giving money but not receiving enough. They always have a little bit of like a, a sweet, bitter feeling between donor and the NGO. And uh, they went back to their vision statement and the donor has to be part of this, this journey as well. And they decided to create, um, okay, how can we then activate donor, not just giving money, but like, how can we make them more activist? And how, what if the donors are creating the social action they are really interested in, not just the, the, the one that we are giving to. And if we can make that as a, a social movement and a network, and each one of them has a power to create the change, which is autonomous being. And we just uh, 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 providing the, uh, uh, the table that they can sit around and then they can do this work together. So that's like a, a long explanation but like social action network we're building with world vision korea and with the can uh, 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 a protocol which i think to some of our friends will explain and uh, coming up next week this is a vague and the impact collective is now we're bringing this crowd and then human focused approach like to uh, impact investing because uh, also when we see the investment, it's always two, like a two party, big party, investor or entrepreneur. It's just like basically the game of these two. But when you think of like the ecosystem of startups or success of this startup, it's not just investor is making startup successful. They definitely need a capital, but there is other like people, biggest supporter is user, advocates. Uh, startup like uh, community builders or ecosystem builders or other corporation academia there's so many other people that comes together to help the company or entrepreneur to create this solution that is serving the world better and to do that then we need also a place but there's not enough place so we bringing this uh, uh, a platform and also program and, and the capital to basically decentralizing this power dynamic just between Im investors and entrepreneur, but distributing to people whoever has contribution to any sort of startup uh, uh, like success. And, and that's how we building this impact collective. And as you can see as a name, it's a collective uh, effort that we are creating, not just the company that is creating the initiative, but also many different other parties come together and building this entrepreneur success as our success and supporting this movement. So that's uh, what we are doing. And the Weave is basically uh, playing in a part of designing this uh, governance and also operating this uh, uh, programs and systems together with other partners. That's what we do. That is really, um, that's really uh, informa informative for for us to know as well. I mean, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you have an upcoming um, opening cohort, right, for Impact Collective, for a, a, um, a program, right? So it's gonna be virtual. Yeah, it's going yeah. to be a hundred virtual. Unfortunately, we'd love to have everybody in person and then offline event. 
because of Corona, we turned everything to the uh, virtual event. And um, yeah, this is our very first year and we just started uh, open our application a month ago and we have two more months to go. And we are looking for uh, a just exceptional uh, startups and entrepreneurs in Asia, especially APAC, I mean, ASEAN and plus a little bit of APAC reason, uh, or even US to Europe, whoever creating solution for Asia land and then a market, they can all apply. And there is great information on our website, like impactcollective.earth, and you can go in and there is um, many, many information you can have a look, but like there is a few, key that I can mention quickly here is we are uh, impact focused and also not just like providing the impact industry uh, opportunity, but we become a bridge between impact and then normal uh, technology startup. And then uh, giving them either impact angle or impact strategy angle or business strategy angle. So everyone can actually win-win in, in terms of uh, growth. Uh, and we are partnering with the uh, uh, really good international NGOs and also the uh, uh, organization. So we can actually uh, provide you guys um, uh, a pilot program into the, the city level. And that's, that's great for startups. And we have no fee or equity required upfront. So you just come in and meeting amazing humans, amazing experts, getting a lot of advice and do your work. And at the end, if you get investment, that's good. If not, you're still getting a lot of benefit out of it. So I highly recommend everyone to check and then uh, apply. And we will be seeing you like weekly basis. Got it. Got it. Yeah, thank you for sharing. So, um, what what would be the um, uh, I mean along your journey from a humanitarian um, journey as a uh, as a as a humanitarian worker, and also the uh, now moving towards a, a deep tech being a deep tech entrepreneur, what kind of challenges um, uh, do you face? I mean along the journey. You can you can share you can break it down to two two parts like what is the um, challenge that you face while, when you're doing the humanit uh, humanitarian work and then the second part would be like what kind of challenge that you face during the journey uh, in uh, as a deep tech entrepreneur. Yeah, it's a, it's very uh, paradox actually. It's a, it's a funny thing. Uh, when I was in a humanitarian industry or like a humanitarian worker, basically, I, as I mentioned, there is not enough solution that I could see that, it, you know, what we do right now is driving a huge change. So I was always craving for uh, what's the really the, the change that we can uh, create and how can we do it? And what's the fundamental thing that we have to shift? And I've been always interested in that those kind of things. So. Uh, I feel like, okay, I don't have enough connection to uh, those bigger solutions that could really shape the, our mindset differently and our industry differently, our world differently. And right now in the deep tag entrepreneur, especially in the blockchain, I mean, it has a great potential with amazing uh, technicians and amazing people in this industry. And one of the smartest people in the world are working on this deep tag uh, um, uh, industry right now, but often I meet uh, a lot of people that is so deep into technology and they are forgetting what's happening in the real world. And really there is not enough a force of in the middle, like, okay, who understand enough of this technology and also understand the problem that we're creating. So there's a big solution that there is a big problem, but are we meeting enough you know, are, are we actually in the same position or same understanding and then standing there to create the solution together? Uh, so that's kind of the biggest challenge that I have. And also on top of that, you know, being an entrepreneur is really a hard job. It's not an easy thing that you have to devote it, your sweat and blood and time and energy. And at the end, like, oh, are we really doing this um, for what, right? And are we happy enough? Are we healthy enough to deliver this work? And all this kind of 
big questions has come into my mind and I'm on my way to find this, uh, uh, this answer, uh, this answer to this, these questions. And I'm, I'm very much enjoying it, but that's, uh, really the, uh, the questions that I'm carrying a lot. Okay. So, um, besides the uh, challenges and I think you have been, um, I think as an entrepreneur, it's all it's it's also about being uh, like very. Uh, you need to be very robust. Like you need to be very like um, like any situation that comes to you, you just you are you are basically just able to climb back up again, right? Like nothing can nothing is hard for you, right? I mean, if there's uh, if there are difficulties or there's problem, definitely they'll find a way, right? So that's that's what an entrepreneur. Um, journey or a lifestyle is as well right so the other thing is we would like to know about like as being a deep tech entrepreneur and also talking about uh impacting lives right and and how how would you able to ensure like collaboration works um in any organization yeah so I think the deep technology carries a lot of um, a responsibility because we are basically experimenting with the technology uh, and we are experimenting our humanity with the technology. So that, that comes with a huge responsibility and it should come with a great philosophy foundation as well. It, it shouldn't be like tech, sake of tech to build a better tech or faster tech or expensive tech. But it, you know, why are we doing this? This question is always so important. And impact world is also why questions and what kind of solution, why is it created? And these questions are all very, very important. So I think in that level, we can uh, come together and then do the eye gauging like, okay, like uh, why are we doing this? And uh, what kind of impact are we creating? Is there is a lot of things that we can talk about. And to do that, uh, we need a more space to um, meet these people, you know, and there is not enough uh, um, a space that we can discuss this stuff. And I, I, I have a great communities have like a awareness of all these two different parts, but it's still a very small number of people. And um, like my question is, how can we create a more uh, opportunity for people to talk about deep technology and then its, its origin and how the technology works and also like how it's going to impact our life in, in good way or bad way. And also the impact technology or the impact industry is like how technology can help to create the solution that we've been looking for and to bring the, the, the change faster. And like what we do right now in the static grind and having this fireside chat, and this is one of the activities that we are doing basically to create a general understanding about what's, what's really happening in between these two industry and, uh, and bringing more people and bring more diversity of ideas and bringing more, uh, uh, different perspective and creating a community and a collective uh, of understanding is, is very, very important. Got it. So um, the other thing is because when we talk about um, supporting the, uh, I mean, supporting and helping uh, like impacting lives, right? And supporting and helping other community uh, that is actually um, not to say underserved, but they are, they, they, they are not as, they are not as um, um, they are not as uh, like your pyramid your pyramid uh, diagram just now that we are on the mm -hmm. top right so so how how are we able to like um, uh, cultivate the uh, support system uh, that lasts in in entrepreneurship or businesses? Uh, that's a really really big question actually yeah and. <laughs> Basically, yeah, and helping this a bottom of pyramid is uh, it's it's not even a helping, right? Like a bringing a bringing a power and a control back to these people, so they can actually become a consumer of our goods and consumer of or be part of our uh, economic cycle, and that's the kind of the goal of of, of me basically, and. Uh, so how can we support is basically creating more opportunity like impact collectives for example like 
you know, we, we've been doing a lot of deep tech uh, investment and the deep tech uh, uh, creation our own. And uh, there is a, but we cannot creating solution for everyone, right? And that's why we're inviting entrepreneurs to come in. And like, we are looking for hundred startups to, to support and, and they all have um, amazing idea to tackle um, these, I earlier shared the 16 or 17 uh, SDG goals, like uh, uh, climate actions and no poverty, zero hunger and affordable and clean land and clean energies and like future of work and peace and justice, a good health, all of this that actually impacting everyone's life, including the bottom of the pyramid. And if we can uh, create a more bridge between the op opportunity for these startups to do a better job and a more and more amazing job and with a great impact and a capital that's supporting this and then an uh, ecosystem that's supporting this. And that's um, what we can do and as also the community leaders and the community builders and that's what we do we just creating a space for these people to meet and then so we can just indirectly kind of supporting this movement and change right. and that's what we do and uh and hopefully that eventually these startups can uh convert their business more toward to the impact angle or people who have already an impact business can do better business so they can create a more solution for more people. So that's how we navigate this, right? But everybody should really uh, focus on the core of our working and what, why we are doing this. And I hope that later and someday this deep technology or not deep technology, any technology can really help and create the opportunity for the bottom pyramid people. Got it, got it. And um, the next question is a little bit, um, a bit uh, towards like, since now we are talking about, I mean, this whole month, I mean, uh, in Startup Grind, we are celebrating Women's Month, right? Uh, uh, cele celebrating women founders, women leaders, women professionals, uh, anyone uh, from the women um, gender that actually uh, contributes and, and provide a lot, right, to the community. So just want to understand, is there any kind of um, um, because when we talk about uh, women month, right? A lot of people might think that it's all feminism, but we are pretty much like not feminism, like the extreme type, but we are focusing a lot more on the inclusivity as well. Um, like basically, there's no uh, gender bias and everything. So we just want to like my question to you is like, what would you um, what what what's the do you face any challenge in the tech scene, the deep tech scene, for example, like basically like, is it all dominant by um, um, men or um, how, how do they perceive all, oh, like I, I'm, I'm sure that you have some uh, partners or people that you work with are mostly uh, men, for example, right? Yeah, I so think- So what's your, uh, your feeling? Uh, my, my, my feeling to that. <laughs> So uh, I can only speak of like uh, a blockchain industry. Uh, when, when I started, which is 2013, it's really generally men, like probably one to nine uh, uh, portion. And, but now I think uh, the technology has been brewing for the last decade. And then the industry also matured a little bit better. And we have lots of women uh, entrepreneurs and a lot of women players in the deep tech. And uh, as, as time goes, uh, as, as technology grow and also our society uh, discussion around gender has increased and still the gender sensitivity and the gender is a big issue and a big 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 thing to talk about. But I think it's getting definitely better and better. And you know, when the deep technology, probably when it's R&D uh, type, they're definitely just more men, um, uh, men, men brain is, is there. I mean, there is an amazing woman scientist or woman researchers that they're all the time, but it's, it's just not shown enough, but well, and but then when it comes to the commercial side a little bit, like because like deep tech, 
at some point it has to come up to the surface and the people has to use it at some point. And then that that's where the woman comes in as a storyteller, as a marketer, as an ecosystem builder. And that there is so many other things that woman can contribute to, to bring this technology uh, above the water. And uh, I mean, we shouldn't feel actually uh, discouraged because we are not doing deep, deep, deep research or a core of things i mean oh, i i'm saying again there is an amazing woman who's doing that already but like you know there is so many things that men just cannot like do better and same with the woman so uh when we talk about like inclusivity it's not like dividing it's basically just having a not having a concept of judgment you know just taking out the judgment and then whoever get the job done and whoever can do the better job and we just encourage and let them show up and then do their job. I think that's very important. But while there is always archetype, I think we still have a long way to go to achieve like full inclusivity or whatsoever. And now we have a race issue and there's so many things to talk about. And, and But yeah, that's where I am. And I'm very proud of the, the people in blockchain, amazing women entrepreneurs and women ecosystem builder and deep appreciation to them. Yeah. I think what you just, <clears throat> sorry, I think what you just mentioned, it, it's suddenly one word that just, um, I think throughout the 45 minutes of, um, ha of uh, chatting with you, I think there's one word that is constantly uh, passing through my mind and especially what you just shared i think the word is collective because of that's why impact collective is also about right so it's all about creating impact how do you impact other people's lives right so um with this i think it relates very closely to what you just shared like uh, whether it's inclusivity or or gender or anything but i think collective putting aside the judgment because end of the day we are looking into more of like getting the job done and end of the day is to create a better living society and a community, right? Yeah, and then collective only can function when we are fully appreciate who we are as a, as just as an autonomous human and a collective and community does not function when there is a broken piece comes in. You know, you have to come in as who you are and if you are, are not either finding that and if you're not confident enough who you are and if you cannot say what you want or what you don't want and that's very big uh, 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 how can I say it that will it ends up creating a lot of issue in the community setup and the collective setup so like a whole point of doing this is actually like how can we empower the individuals every single person in the world uh, stand as who they are and working as a collective and so you don't always have to, uh, you know, like feel as used or something like that, but like you, you just come show up as who you are fully and then people are collaborating with you, you know, and in an equal level, you know, it's, and then that's how the collective, the idol collective works. And also woman and inclusivity is we just have to um, like, like em embrace it who we are and then what i am and then a lot of this this connection issue as oh i'm different like a different gender different race it will just kind of disappear once we fully accept who i am and then from there that you will accept who malcolm is who, who jen is too so it's basically the uh uh, uh a floating the autonomous love and and things like that is is just spreading to the community yeah <laughs> nicely word nicely word so okay so since we're also on the topic of um, um entrepreneur journey of yours right so um definitely one question that pops in my mind that i would want to know i think the listeners will also want to know is um during this journey of yours which part is the most memorable um the uh, memorable part of your your journey like is there any um something that happened or something that really like is so um memorable to you during this journey 
there is so so many things about memorable journey <laughs> but at the end as a reflection when i think of it i i think when i saw the uh, potential to to see like impossible to be possible you know i think those moments are the most important uh, or like shifting moment or awakening moment like for example like when we built the the solution the sms bitcoin wallet and when we start seeing the people are using before it was potential it was just like uh is it possible it was just like a more like assumption and have but this is that we had and then once people start using it it's become reality so we see like okay it was something not exist now it exists because we built it and it's it's same with every journey that i'm doing like same with the weave we thought of this and oh, this is a really nice concept and this is really nice narrative but is it possible now is we know that it's possible because we've been doing this for a year and it's, it's working so those kind of moments and with the, also the impact collective as well like we now have like a big 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 uh hypothesis and assumption like this gonna work in this way and we are designing the process right now but when we start to see this is fruiting and then people coming in and then we doing this and we is really creating something that wasn't there before us so these kind of uh transition moments are really uh incredible nice nice Okay, so um, I think we are pretty much, um, time is really uh, running out uh, as much as we would like to have a lot longer uh, chat with you as well. Um, but before I go to the next session, I would like to check with the um, audience. Um, any one of you have any questions for Songi? Um, you can just type in the Q&A uh, section. So we will be able to take uh, maybe three or four questions. We, we have about 15 minutes of time, yeah? Um, while waiting for the questions to come in, uh, maybe I can just jump into the uh, next session, which is uh, a rapid fire session. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, surprise. So, um, so there are, there are actually uh, five questions, all right? Oh, so okay. Can, so hopefully you can answer it without uh, much consideration of thinking, okay? Okay. Let's um, do this. Oh, so what is the latest thing you bought online? Uh, my second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so number two is um, what's what's your favorite currency? Oh, my favorite currency? I like Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your favorite drink? Uh, kombucha. Kombucha. Is it uh, from Korea or? No, this is like a fermented drink. So, you know, I cannot drink alcohol, so right. uh, which is like fermented soda drink kind of time that not even soda. It's the fermented drink that it helps your digestion better and things like that. And it, it's, it's just a thing. It's like a tea with the fermented ones together. Yeah. Okay. The next question. The place you go to for inspiration. Oh, I actually, well, this is getting deep, but I, I love being creative during my meditation. So I, when I need inspirations, I'm nature, 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 number one. And to digest that, meditate, meditate, meditate. Very nice. Very, 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 very inspiring. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and um, what's, your, what's your favorite person to talk to? Oh, oh, well, there are many people that I would like to talk to, but I really enjoy uh, my time with my partner and we, we just talk a lot about different stuff and then helping each other. And I, 
uh, we, we probably basically spending 24 seven together because of Corona, but it's just always nice to have like someone that I can talk about everything. Yeah. So that's my partner. He's, he's, he's one of the participants, I guess today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe not to mention the name now. It's okay. But yeah, yeah um, we don't we don't have questions from the audience, so um, I think we have one. I see that uh, on the yeah chat. Oh, we have we have one in a in a yeah. chat. Okay. Uh huh. Right. And the chat was Kenzo was asking oh, how from, was your project? Mm -hmm. Gone. Yeah, it's from Chan Chan Wai. So it's a uh, how was your approach to failure? Do you have any advice to share? Yeah, Chen, um, the failure. I sometimes often introduce myself as a su I'm successfully failed entrepreneur. And <laughs> failure is really hard, but now it's become, uh, how can I say, it's some badging. Like I've done it, I failed it, and I uh, recover from it. So uh, don't 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 be afraid to fail. I mean, it is it is scary thing. It is definitely a scary thing. You don't want to fail, uh, and then you don't want to set anything for failure. Uh, but a failure is is something that you cannot avoid along the journey. We have a little failure every day as well, and then big failure in life too. So just I wouldn't say get used to it, but like don't be afraid. Just keep going and don't give up and. Uh, failure it feels better with the people around you and when you have a really great friends and families or ally to share and and then go through those difficult time together and that's definitely winning and a failure definitely in the education process you you will learn from some uh, the failure itself and you can make that as a uh, your opportunity and not just remain as a failure i think that's my advice Thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, failure is also a, is part of the journey like you mentioned, and it's, it's actually a lesson, right? We are, we, if we have no failure, we are not able to uh, be a better uh, person or be uh, good in what we have not doing well yet, right? So it, for improvement purposes as well, right? So I think life is, Life is it. Life has to be with failure, right? Along the way, so we really have to embrace that. We have to embrace that. But I think the most important thing is that everyone needs to know how to bounce back, right? Yeah. So I think that is yeah. one. That is one of the hardest thing. But like what you just mentioned as well about the support system, which is the friends, family, uh, people around you that really supports you. Um, I think that is really important. Um, and I think uh, we are not that, I think we are not that um, alien to all this experience because I think among the uh, startup ecosystem or the uh, community builders as well, um, every one of us do um, um, go through this experience and we do have that support system. Like we sometimes just uh, ping each other and say, hey, let's have a call. And we just um, talk to each other, and you know, just just a communication um, reach out. So I mm -hmm. think um, any any one of you out there who are listening to this, I think um, any any time, just send a message to some of your friends, just to check on like, hey, how are you doing today? Um, or like, hey, would you be free for virtual coffee so we can catch up? You know, just ten minutes or fifteen minutes that makes a huge difference, right? yeah totally totally yeah and bouncing back and having resilience is 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 really really important and to to build that there is so many ways that you can do it but like you just got to find your own way and try out yeah maybe you all can try Songi's way the meditate 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 and uh um um like go to the nature, to the nature for example uh, yes <laughs> even though just walking around the park maybe Right, so that might already um, give you a, a a quick thirty minutes of a breather that you can um, like sink certain uh, anxiety or something that you can like your stress level can be reduced as well. I think just going to the nature or breathing fresh air 
should be should be should be a most fundamental thing to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, because now we are all always because now we are all always on the uh, in front of the screen, right? So it has to we we need to go out, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, we we have already come to an end of this session, the fireside chat with Sony, um, a deep tech entrepreneur based in New Zealand, nationality as a Korean. Uh, but I think she has moved around many times. Uh, a big <laughs> yeah. thank you for a big thank you for your time sharing all the uh, your journey and also some information on the Impact Collective and we what are you all doing as well. And thank you to all the uh, listeners or audience that is virtually here with us. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to um, get in touch uh, with any one of us, just send us an email or just go to our social media, reach out to us, and we are more than happy to uh, answer some of those questions. So once again, I would like to say a big thank you to uh, two supporting chapter of Startup Grind from Ulan Bata and also Tbilisi for helping us promoting our event to their community as well. And besides that, we are going to end this session with a networking uh, networking session, uh, a quick 15 to 20 minutes. So any one of you who are interested to this session, don't leave yet. And I will basically open up the panel uh, session for you all to come in, right? So thank you very much. <laughs>